Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mountain Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Try this first thing tomorrow morning. Treat yourself to the breakfast cereal shot from guns. That's the one and only Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice. Just pour out a bowl full, crisp and fresh, right from big red and blue package. Add milk or cream, top with your favorite fruit, and dive in. See if you ever tasted anything so swell as these giant king-sized kernels of premium wheat or rice shot from guns. Yes, tomorrow morning. Enjoy this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Matt Davis and Sandy Benham had been working a claim all winter in the Lost River District. It had turned out to be nothing but a grub stake digging. A combination of bad luck and the bitter weather which kept them confined to the cabin day after day had made Davis bitter and resentful. Another blizzard was raging outside. The two men had just finished their midday meal, and Sandy rose from the table and strolled over to his bunk. Where are you going? I'm going to read the almanac. I cooked this meal. you got to clean up. Uh, okay. Well, get started. <clears throat> I'm going to read the almanac first. You read that thing from cover to cover a hundred times. <laughs> this makes a hundred and one, then. You just do it to get my goat. No, I like to read it. It's a lot better than talking to some people I could mention. Me, for instance. You, for instance. Well, the time's come when we got to do some talking, see? We're running low on supplies. You know that. Sure. We both know it, so why should we talk about it? Because it's your fault. I told you we had to have more to last the winter. I bought as much as I could afford. Oh, what a prize fool I was to take a chichaco for a partner. A no-good tenderfoot without enough money to buy a decent grub steak. Beggars can't be choosers, man. Beggars? That's what I said. You didn't have a dime. I knew the country. I've been up here for ten years. Yeah, yeah. You're going to lead me straight to another bonanza. No guesswork about it. You knew where there was gold. You'd have been a lot worse off without me. I couldn't have been worse off. You were raw, green. I've ripened. You didn't know the first thing about prospecting. You don't know much more now. But everything you do know, I taught you. You let me do most of the work. I've through. done my share. Listen, Matt, we're different. We're different as day is from night. I'm younger than you. I like to laugh now and then, but I haven't felt like laughing for the past three months. You know that if I were absolutely sure I could make a million dollars by going partners with you next year, well, I wouldn't do it. A million wouldn't be enough. So we're all washed up, hmm? I'll stick it out to spring, but no longer. We haven't enough supplies to last us till spring. If we're going to call it quits. We might as well do it now. So you're finally admitting there isn't any gold here. Yeah. Okay. It's too bad you didn't do that three months ago. I didn't know you were a jinx then. Me? A jinx? That's what I said. <laughs> ah, <shit>. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh, Matt. A jinx, me. Hoss, you been. I'm the luckiest guy in Wyoming. I wish you'd have stayed there. I wish I'd have never seen your face. I'd like to put a bullet through you. Don't try it while I'm looking, Matt. I can outdraw you in a day in the week. Let's get down to business. We're splitting up. Yeah. Right now. That suits me. We split up the supplies and the equipment today. Blizzard ought to be over by tomorrow. It's seasoned off a little now. And we can both leave for White Horse the first thing in the morning. How much dust we got? About a hundred dollars worth. You've got a little folding money, too, haven't you? That's my business. And there wasn't enough to buy more supplies. It's enough to get me back to Wyoming, and that's all. Well, all the dogs belong to me. 
Unless you want to pull your own sled, you'll have to buy a team. But our agreement was that you were to furnish transportation. I didn't say both ways. You've been eating my grub all winter. No dogs unless you buy them. Uh, all right. You can keep all the dust. I'm sick of arguing with you. You're going to clean up that table? I'd like to clean up on you. You'd double-cross your best pal. If you had one. I think you'd even commit murder. It'd be a pleasure. Well, just remember what I told you about my draw. Uh, somebody coming. I wonder who it is. Louis Sorrell went down to Whitehorse last week. Maybe he's come back. Oh! Yeah, that's him, all right. <laughs> It'll sure seem good to see a friendly face. Hello, my friend. Hiya, Louis. Come on inside and have a cup of tea. Hello, Louis. How you feel? I'm okay. Sit down, Louis. Sit down. <laughs> the tea isn't very hot. I'll warm it up some. Must be pretty tough traveling this storm. Oh, huh? uh, Louis or else she has seen plenty more tough. The snow she still come down pretty thick, but the wind she is not so bad now. It's not bad at all. It means we can leave in the morning, man. Oh, where you go? To Whitehorse. That guy and me are splitting up. Oh, you are still mad at each other, no? Never mind us, Louis. How's Whitehorse? It's a good place. Louis have one fine time there. My <laughs> way. <laughs> such, a, such a time as you'd never hear of. Did you get a good price for your furs? I tell you, when Louis Sorrell walk out of that store, he is a rich man. <laughs> How long before you were broke? Oh, no, no, not this time. I say to Louis, you can spend $200, that is all. <laughs> that is all Louis spent. He is a good boy. Good for you. How much did you get for your furs? You will not believe me, Matt. They're crazy or something in White Horse. But they give me $3,000. 3000 Boy. But even so, Louis does not like the trading company. They try to cheat me. After they give him money, they try to take it back. What's that? What I tell you is true. Uh, was this the Yukon Trading Company? We. Oui. They say, let us keep money. I say, no. If you not give me money, you give me back for her. <laughs> they weren't trying to cheat you, Louis. Yeah, they want to keep my money. Uh, yeah, yeah, but... They have a bank in connection with the trading company. If you'd have left your money, it would have been safe. And you could have drawn it out whenever you wanted to. Eh, I don't understand. Do you mean to say you don't know what a bank is? Sure. On River, there is two banks. <laughs> one on this side, one on that side. <laughs> Not that kind of a bank, Louis. You, you know what a safe is, don't you? We oui, is strong box with lock. They have them in cafe. They have one at the trading company, too. A great big one. Yeah. That tea, she is hot now? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, Louie. I'll get it. The trading company's safe is big enough for a lot of people's money. It's no good. Get, get mixed up. They forget which is my money. Louie keep his money himself. <laughs> All right. I give up. Here's your tea. Thank you. So you brought $3,000 back with you, huh? We match. I have it right here. I, I show it to you. Thank you, tea. It, it burned tongue now. Come on, Louie. Let's see it. It's a long time since I've seen $3,000. Well, here you are, Matt. He's all in money belt here. Yeah. Yes, sir. 3000 bucks. <laughs> it's a good price for fur. No, oh, those dogs. What's the matter? There's only one answer. When they bark like that, they are fighting. I have to drink this tea quick. I'll pull them apart. <laughs> you don't have to hurry, Louis. Your leaves got them straightened out. Better go anyway. They're tired. It's only one mile now. I come over to see you soon, maybe one or two weeks. No, Louis. This is goodbye for good. We're leaving in the morning. Oh, oh, that is true. Well, good luck to both of you. Goodbye, Matt. Goodbye, Louis. Goodbye, Sandy. Maybe I see you in White Horse sometime. Right, Louis. So long. After Louis had left, Sandy cleaned up the dinner dishes. No word was spoken between the two partners until he had finished. And then... What are you thinking about? Nothing. It's easy to tell what you're thinking. I can see it in your face. You like the looks of that money yourself. Louie's been a good friend to us this winter. Yeah. I'm going out. What for? Main reason is I don't want to stay in this cabin with you. I'll take my gun and do a little hunting. It's a poor day for hunting. It's still snowing. Yeah, I know that. And on the other hand, the hunting might be very good. I get what you're driving at. But just remember what I told you before. 
We're different. We don't think alike. We don't act alike. You're heading in the direction of Louis's cabin? No. I'm going down by the river. Where's my knife? How should I know? Mine's there on the table. You can use it if you want it. You mean it? Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> well, thanks. It's all right. I'll be back before it gets dark. Uh, not much before, though. Maybe we'll have some fresh meat for supper. Fine. Go on. <laughs> so you couldn't find your knife, Sandy, huh? Well, here it is, right underneath the bench. There's no mistaking it's yours either. Great big B carved on the handle. <laughs> <laughs> We'll continue our story in just a moment. Know who I am? I am a magician. Yes, on this empty table before me, by merely waving my magic wand, I shall produce a tiger. Presto, magic, look. And now... I shall instantly change this most ferocious animal of the cat family into the tamest. Presto, magic, look. And now for the greatest feat of all. On the table are two bowls, cereal bowls. You see, they're empty. In my right hand, I have two packages, big red and blue packages. Now, in a twinkling, you shall see the most delicious breakfast treat on earth. A bowl brimful of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. The ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. Yes, fellas and girls, there's no beating this eating. For breakfast, enjoy Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice topped with milk or cream and your favorite fruit. These giant king-sized kernels of premium wheat or rice are shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting to make them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Best of all, you don't have to be a magician to enjoy wheat or rice shot from guns morning after morning. Simply ask Mom right now to order those famous big red and blue Quaker packages. Look for the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the original, the one and only Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston and young Ted Forrest, a new member of the force in the Yukon, were returning to Whitehorse with two prisoners, Scar Lamont and Lefty Muldoon. Taking! Gee! You're taking the right fork? Yes. I thought the river was straight on. It is. This trail leads to Louis Sorrell's cabin. Who's he? Sapper, old friend of mine. He'll put us up for the night. The dog's are tired. How about us? Lighting a set all day shouldn't have taken too much out of you, Scar. Anybody with sense would have tried to drive through this storm. Don't worry. It won't be long before you're in a nice, warm jail. There's the cabin, Ted. The clearing up ahead. I see you. Mother King. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nothing wrong, boy? The door's open. What is it, Sergeant? I don't know. King doesn't like the looks of the cabin. You wait here. I'll investigate. The sergeant started to cross the clearing toward the cabin with the great dog at his side. King growled deep in his throat, and the sergeant made sure his gun was ready for action. The snow and wind blotted out their tracks behind them, and the snow had drifted into the cabin through the open door. That door's been open for some time, King. No sign of Louis anywhere. Strange. The interior of the cabin was dark, but King ran directly to the far side of the table and growled once more. Just a second, boy, till I light this lamp. There. Now, what is it? King! A man lay on the floor, face down. A knife had been plunged in his back. It's murder. Ted, come here! As Constable Forrest drove the teams onto the cabin, the sergeant examined the knife carefully. An ordinary hunting knife, but with a bee carved on the handle. How about taking these handcuffs off? Go on, get in there. That stove isn't cold. It's cold in here. Sit over on that bench, you two. Come here, Ted. What's the matter? Look. What? I 
see. Is he... Is he dead? Yes, he was killed about an hour ago. Is it Sorel? No, it isn't, Ted. Sorel's much shorter, and he has black hair. No gray at all. I'll take the knife out and turn him over. What? Do you recognize him? Yes, it's Matt Davis. Who's he? A prospector who lived on the river about a mile from here. He has a partner named Sandy Benham. Somebody murdered, huh? But well, you can't accuse us of this one anyway. Could Sorel have done it? I'd be willing to stake my life he didn't. This knife, a bee carved on it. What? You said the partner was called Benham. That's right. Ted, I'm going to leave you here for a while. Get the stove going and cook some food. Sure. There's no tracks you can follow, though. I know. I'm going over to Benham's cabin. Will you... You take Davis with you? Oh, yes. Give me a hand with him. Right. That's it. The body was loaded on the sergeant's sled, and he drove through the gathering dusk to the cabin a mile down the river. Night had fallen by the time he reached it. There was a light in the window, and when he called out for the team to stop, the door opened. Working! Hello, Husky! Who's there? Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. It's Sergeant Preston, Louis. One king. Hello, Sergeant. Louis, she is most happy to see you. It's been a long time. We... Where's your partner, Benham? Why, I don't know. Where's your hunting knife? <laughs> I don't know that either. I mislaid it somewhere. Is this it? Yeah. Where did you find it? In your partner's back. Uh, Sergeant, you mean he's dead? He's out on my sled. What happened? Where did you find him? Louis, how long have you been here? It's about two hours now. I'm glad you have come. I am afraid to go back to my own cabin. Why? Because of who is there. I have just come back from Whitehorse this afternoon, Sergeant. I stop here on the way. I drive on to my own cabin. But then when the team get close, they act mighty funny, so I do not come close by the trail. I take a long way around and... Look in back window. What'd you see? A fella. He is bad fella. He is fella people in Whitehorse tell me to watch out for. You you know his name. He's, he's Bat Nelson. Oh? He followed me up here, I think. Except he come ahead. Why should he do that? I have $3,000 in this money belt. And Bat knew about that? Oui. He showed it to us, too, on his way home. Yeah, but you are a friend. I do not show it to Bat. He hear about my money, though, I think. What'd you do after you saw him, Louis? I go back to the team, I turn around, I drive the river and down this way. I see Sandy. That's right, Sergeant. He told me about this Nelson being in his cabin. I, I wanted to go back there with him, but he said no. It takes someone like you to handle Nelson, Sergeant. Sandy, what reason would your partner have for going to Louis' cabin? I... I don't know. You sound as if you do. The man's dead, Sergeant. Is it possible that he was interested in Louis' money, too? Is it possible he was carrying your knife this afternoon? It's possible, if he found it. He loaned me his. But do you mean that's where you found him, Sergeant, at Louis' cabin? Yes. Bat killed him. I'd better get back there fast. You have seen Bat, maybe? No, but I left Constable Forrest there guarding two prisoners. Scar Lamont and Lefty Muldoon. They're old friends at Nelson's. They're as bad as he is. The three of them used to work together, and if Bat's anywhere around... Come on, Sandy. We'll bring your partner's body in here. I've got to get started. <laughs> In Louis's cabin, Ted Forrest was building up the fire in the stove, preparatory to cooking supper. His two prisoners, still handcuffed, were sitting on the bench against the wall. They could see the door opening behind the young constable, but neither of them said a word. A man sprang into the room. Before the constable could turn, the butt end of a revolver cracked down behind his ear. Matt! Oh. Yeah, what's up? How come you're wearing those bracelets? Yeah, the mummy's got a key on him. Get it. Yeah, how come? I thought you'd be in the Klondike by now. Yeah, we stopped on the way to pick up a little gold dust. The money's picked us up after. What are you doing here? Yeah, this cabin belongs to Louis Sorrell. I'm waiting for him to come back from Whitehorse. He's got a lot of dough on him. Can't you find a key? Uh, yeah, yeah, this must be it. Oh, so you killed that prospector we found here. It was self-defense. <laughs> I'll bet. It was. There you are. Oh, good. Pull out your hands, Lefty. Yeah. What happened? Yeah, I was waiting out in the woods. But the storm got too bad. I decided to come in here and light a fire in the stove. I was bending over it just like this mountie was when the door opened. But I moved fast. The guy with a knife. I twisted it out of his hand, then he tried to get away, but I got him in the back. Yeah, you got him good. Come on, let's get out of here. What are you talking about? We tie the mountie up and gag him. Then we put out the lamp and wait for Louie. I still want that money. Did you see us drive up here? Yeah. Then you ought to know there's another mountie. He's just taking the body over to some cabin on the river. Another one? Once more, it's Preston, and he'll be coming back here before long. I couldn't make out who any of you were till I came up to the window just now. 
The snow was falling too thick. Well, now that you know, let's get out of here. I still want Louis' money, $3,000. You want to tangle with Preston? Why not? There's three of us. Yeah. Why not, Lefty? He'll come walking in here thinking nothing's wrong. The three of us can handle him. Yeah, but don't forget his dog. Yeah. I'd like nothing better than to put a bullet through that cur. From the moment King obeyed the sergeant's command to turn off the river trail toward Louis' cabin, the dog was uneasy. And it was more than the scent of death that still clung to the clearing. The cabin was quiet. Too quiet. That was it. There were men inside, and not a sound could be heard from them. The sergeant shared the sense of imminent danger, and he stopped the team a good 50 feet away from the door. Looking! Hold your husky! Well, everything seems to be the way we left it, boy. He opened his parka and rested his hand on his gun. Come on. He and King started for the door. Still, not a sound could be heard from inside the cabin. He turned aside toward the window. There were Scar and Lefty sitting on the bench. Ted Forrest could not be seen. Could be in the far corner getting supplies, King. Still, we'd better be careful. The sergeant continued on toward the door. He pulled the latch string. Then suddenly pushed the door wide open. In that instant, he could see Forrest lying on the floor, bound and gagged. A flash of metal in Scar's hand. Not handcuffs, but a gun. Another man with a gun in his hand. Then he ducked away from the open door as a volley of shots rang out. And he ran for the cover of the trees close to the side of the cabin. As he reached them, he saw Bat Nelson standing in the doorway and he fired. The shot bit into the logs inches away from Bat. The door slammed. And almost at once, the light in the cabin went out. Now what, King? It's a prisoner and there are three of them against us. Nothing to do but wait and let them make the first move. And there, in the bitter cold, the sergeant and King crouched, waiting. The northern lights crackled across the sky, green, yellow, and red. The firs cast deep black shadows across the clearing. But there was no sign of life from the cabin. No sound. An hour passed. (laughs) Then King and the sergeant heard a dog team far away. That must be Louie and Sandy. Perhaps Louie driving alone coming back here. If he takes the trail from the river, King, that's waiting for Louie. We've got to stop him. Come on, boy. The sergeant rose to his feet, and still keeping to the cover of the trees, he headed for the river. Inside the cabin, Lefty turned from his post at the back window. Do you see him anywhere? No. He's gone. Now stay where you are. I am. Dog's back. Coming this way. Right from the river. That's the trail Louie would take. Maybe it's Preston come back with some help. I told you to stay where you were. There's nobody back there. There's the team. Do you know it, Bat? Is that Louis? Yeah. Is that him? Yeah, I recognize his parka. If the man was still in the woods, he'd warn him. Yeah, he must be gone. Why don't you shoot, Bat? I can't get a beat on him. He's driven around the corner of the cabin. Why didn't you shoot before? Crouched too low on the sled. Good thing we had the lamp out. He don't suspect anything. He'll walk in here and we won't even have to shoot. I wish we could see him. He'll finish unharnessing the team in a minute. We'll see him as soon as he steps through that door. It was the sergeant who had driven into the clearing. He had met Louis and changed parkas with him. King had ridden the sled covered by a blanket. There you are. It's a good trip you'll make. The team was unharnessed. But instead of starting for the door, the sergeant crouched low. And he and King circled the cabin to the rear window. He raised his head cautiously until his eyes were on a level with the sill. In the faint glow from the stove, he could make out three shadows inside the cabin near the door. Now was the moment for action. He opened fire. His first shot hit Scar. Bat fired in return. He, panic-stricken, threw open the door and started to run across the clearing. Bat followed him. We'll head for our team, King. Still harnessed and ready to travel. The sergeant's team was on the far side of the clearing. Bat and Lefty had nearly reached it when the sergeant and King turned the corner of the cabin. Once more, the sergeant opened fire. Lefty was hit and went down. Bat dropped to the ground behind the sergeant's sled. His gun blazed in answer to the sergeant's, and Preston ducked behind a rock. It was only King who saw the glint of metal in the doorway of the cabin. Scar had crawled to the opening and was taking deliberate aim. King raced toward him and leaped just as he was leveling his gun. The gun flew out of Scar's hand and went sliding across the floor. King pinned him down. At that moment, Bat heard gunfire behind him. Sandy and Louie had reached the edge of the clearing and were joining the fight. 
Then the outlaw realized there was no chance of escape. I surrender. Don't shoot anymore. Put up your hands. I'm reaching. Don't shoot. And 15 minutes later, Scar and Lefty, their wounds bandaged, were lying on the floor of the cabin. Bat was wearing handcuffs. And Constable Forrest, still rubbing the circulation back into his wrists, was completing his story. And you fooled them completely when you drove into the clearing the last time, Sergeant. They thought you were Louie. I didn't hope to fool them for long. Only wanted to get close to that cabin. And it was this man who killed Matt. For self-defense, he tried to kill me. Uh, Matt was after Louie's money. I I guess he deserved to die. It was self-defense. You may be able to prove that. But you'll answer for your other crimes. Uh, Sergeant. Yes, Louie. I, I changed my mind. I think maybe it is better you take my money back to White Horse with you. <laughs> I think so, too. If it is not for King and you, they kill me twice tonight to get it. Don't worry anymore. As soon as we put these three in jail, we'll put your money in the bank. <laughs> Looks to me, King, as if this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Here's how Mother can make your family a breakfast-happy family. Just have her treat you to delicious, ready-to-serve Quaker puff wheat or Quaker puff rice topped with milk or cream and your favorite fruit. With little fuss or bother and in practically no time at all, here's a tasty, inexpensive, deluxe family breakfast. Bet Mom goes for this, too. For added health benefits, natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron are restored in Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice. What's more, they're never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always look for the big red and blue Quaker packages. Ask your grocer for Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Monday, when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the mongrel. When old Ned Howe objected to the little dog his grandson wanted to take home, I didn't realize that by putting in a good word for the dog, I was doing something that would save their lives and bring about a very startling adventure for King and me. So startling that neither King nor I will forget that little dog for a long, long time. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.